safety down right here. Well, guys, got a bit of a problem with the NAS server. Alrighty, so a problem with my NAS server, and it's the one that I wasn't really anticipating to see uh, at least come up this soon, but we got a problem with my parity drive, and having a problem with your parity drive, especially one in this type of build where we only put one parity drive in it, could lead to some data loss if we don't act on it quickly. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. It's not like I can give you a cool review of a GPU that I can't get my hands on. But anyway, let's jump on over into the web GUI and let me show you what's going on. Let's go. All right, guys, so here we are on the main dashboard of my Unraid server. As you guys can see, the main problem I'm having is the parity drive is spun down and oh. it is offline. It's not working. All the other disks are showing green, online, and seemingly okay. If we come over to my dashboard, I got a couple things here that I've noticed here. Obviously, again, as mentioned, the parity drive showing as disabled. And it looks like I got some errors on my disk 7. I'm not sure if that even corresponds to what is really going on at least with the parity drive we'll kind of get to that later but I'm not really focusing on that what I'm really concerned with is getting this parity drive back online so here's what we got here so if you go from the da the main dashboard and actually you just click on the drive you can kind of get some quick like statistics on the drive and you can do some kind of troubleshooting so I've done already as you can see is completed without an error was a smart test and that's just a quick test that you can look for basic errors and get a smart report on the device so you end up with something like this which is a text document on all of your drives and basically all the what they call smart information on the device uh, but, but the main thing here is right here start of read smart air data section smart overall health self assessment test results in a pass. I'm not an expert in Unraid either, so I don't know what a lot of this other stuff means per se. Some other things we can check here. So I think this is overall, I guess, good to see that it's at least passed as a as the smart data reads it. That, I guess, corresponds to also the fact that we see if we, on our main dashboard where the parity disk, although labeled as disabled in its status, it's showing a smart, healthy status. So that's where that information kind of correlates. So what else can we look at? What we can come over to here is settings and go down to fix common problems to kind of, I guess, cross verify what's going on. Uh, if you have problems with your server or things that need updating or whatever those things will be flagged on Unraid which I really like uh, it's, it's very intuitive and it allows you to quickly as you can see I got a couple other things that just need some updates like my unified controller but right here the parity is showing disabled only problem is here is it doesn't really tell me anything. It just, uh, if I click on Unraid main to investigate as it suggests I do, I come back to this. <laughs> so I'm on the main and then if I click on my parity drive, well then I come down to here and I basically get the same exact thing that I've already looked at. So, I mean, a good thing to be looking here, I think is things that are alarming within the attributes that have these different alarm categories. We've got things in pre-fail. I don't know if that necessarily means things are, are horribly bad there's definitely several items here that are alarming in pre-fail as we look at but what are those error rates uh, reallocated sector count uh, seek error rate I don't know what that stuff means power cycle count that might just mean like how many times well actually the value this is interesting the value says pre-fail as a type but then I've got no value count whatsoever. A uh, good thing here though is uh, I've, I, what I've researched as well is when you know something's going bad is to look for CRC errors, which UDMA CRC error count as we can see here is zero. So that kind of makes me feel good that the drive might still be healthy. But again, what's the cause of what's going on here? Well, some other things that we can do too is we can come over to our tools, we can go to diagnostics and we can do a full diagnostic analysis and again that's where we pulled our smart report from but it'll pull up all kinds of different things too i mean very very in depth there's logs we got stuff about our shares we got stuff about our configuration we've got some stuff about the general system information and then that breaks down into other categories so there's tons of stuff here and it's very kind of almost overwhelming and i don't really know where to 
kind of begin. I mean, I've kind of done what I think is kind of the basic stuff is kind of just general health checks. But I'm wondering since it's, the, the odd thing is it's detecting the drive. It's seeing it's there and it's even, you can get a health report on it if you go back to the drive and run that. And that's just down here with doing a, an extended health check. And you click on start, it'll run, but then one next. So the last thing I can really honestly think to check here, we really haven't come up with anything super conclusive is to check your system logs. Me being an infrastructure engineer myself in my day job, that's always like a number one thing you wanna check for any kind of errors that might be occurring trying to identify what's going on. I've kind of already scrolled through this uh, here in the logs. There's lots of things going on. I don't really see anything super alarming. I've done searches such as parity, so we can look at that. Um, it is detecting, obviously, that we got something wrong, but again, it doesn't really tell us what other than it's disabled. Yeah, I mean, nothing there, and that's the only entry of parity. Um, my parity is my disk zero, so there's some things here, and this is just, I think, just informational here where it's talking about getting the drive online and mounted etc so that's the only disk zero entry that I have so I've kind of just scrolled through things and again there's lots and lots and lots of stuff going on here so guys at this point I think we've pretty much done as much as we can in terms of trying to get an idea of what's going on with the drive. Still a bit inconclusive. I've been scouring Unraid forums and Reddit and basically a lot of it boils down to the fact that it's probably something to do with the data cables or the way that the system is reading information, data information from the drive, and in our case, lack thereof. So that can be any number of things. It could be cabling, it could be the card that I've got in the add-in card where I've got all the drives linked up to, connected to. Could be the drive itself. Uh, maybe the drive is potentially failing. I kinda am not leaning towards that just because it is one of the newest, actually is the newest drive in the system. All the other drives are, as I mentioned from the video that where we did this build were pulled from an existing running server even though those drives were good so i do have a drive handy just in the event that we need to do a replacement it is a pricey drive it's a 250 dollars drive it's an eight terabyte nas drive so this channel being about budget and being about you know doing things on the cheap obviously we kind of want to know what's going on so i want to do some troubleshooting with you guys first we're going to check cables we're going to check my add-in card maybe try redirecting some cables to the onboard sata controller instead of using my adding card for the parity drive if that gets it back to normal well then obviously you know that points us in a different direction and well then i guess i just have a second additional parity drive to put into the system which i probably should have done all along anywho let's cut over into tearing into the system here and see if we can figure out what's going on Alrighty, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do here is just kind of look for any kind of anomalies. I mean, I don't know what there could possibly be here, but we've got all my cables set up here that are plugged into all the drives. I mean, other than some dust here, they're really, it's not looking too bad. I did dust it out at one point when I was moving it around. Here's my card, so just to make sure it's fully seated, I'm just gonna push on it a little. Yeah, I don't know, that sucker hasn't gone anywhere. There isn't excessive tension or anything on these cables that looks like they might have backed off or pulled out of the card that I can really see here. So let's see, this is my first drive where the parity is. In order for me to basically isolate the card, I'm gonna pull off the cable that's coming from the breakout cable on the add-in card, and I have a bunch of SATA that I can use here. Actually, almost enough that accommodates all my drives, but I'll at least wanna see what happens if I pull off this SATA cable which I'll do here right now. And then I'm going to take an, a separate SATA cable, just like what we have here going from my cache drive and just route it into one of these ports here. And then we'll boot the server up and see, did that net us anything? So it's gonna be a lot of guessing and checking. Alrighty, brand new SATA cable that I just got out of some packaging here. So let's see what happens. We're gonna just plug in to this port up here on the motherboard. And we're leaving the power connection for the drive intact for now. The only thing that we're changing, as mentioned, is the SATA. In you go. All right, fully seated, fully seated. So just one small element of change here. We're going troubleshooting one by one, seeing what's going on. So let's get the power connected. Flip my power switch on the back. All right, so let's get her booted up, see if that did anything for us. 
Okay, so we are booted back up with the SATA cable redirected on the parity drive, and it seems that didn't net us really any good. We let's go to the main here. We have the array started, so everything is basically as it would be when you boot it up, but this is still remaining to be a problem. All right, so then let's go over to settings and let's look for fixed common problems. It's doing a quick scan here, and we are still in the state of it detecting that. So what's next here, guys? Uh, so rerouting the data cable off of the add-in card to the motherboard didn't seem to have any effect. I think what's left to do here is might be worth just trying popping in the replacement drive and seeing if that has any positive effect here immediately because I was expecting to see something honestly with the data cables. So, you know, we've completely isolated the add-in card and uh, effectively are still having the same problem. So it's starting to lead me to believe that the add-in card may not be the problem after all. So at this point, let's replace the drive, put in the new one, see what happens. So system powered off now and we're ready to replace the drive. I got it in my top slot here and this is another reason why I love this chassis. Maintenance is so incredibly simple so here is the driver now presuming it has failed we're not sure yet that remains to be seen so going to get my new drive that I have out of the packaging here and just put it in the drive caddy with the old one from the old one and get this guy in there and again we'll see what happens so I just need to undo some screws here that hold the drive in the caddy that's about it just this and then I'll slide it in we'll power it up in with the new drive line up the screw holes got the new drive in the caddy let's slide this guy into its place simple as that all right time to power on and see if we get anything different so we are now back up on the unraid front end once again we've got the system booted up with the new drive in it now one thing we notice here right off the bat is i'm going to close my notifications here just some basic stuff that the disk zero is no longer present that's because we've now replaced it and the array is running so i'm going to stop the array real quick by clicking stop and we will proceed this will take a second to spin down the array. And then once we're spun down, we wanna check on, see if we can get some kind of health status or look at the new parity drive or what's to be the new parity drive. So now we're at a spot where we have the array spun down and we are going to select our new drive for parity. So going back to parity and selecting our new eight terabyte drive and it's detecting it as a new device. So now let's spin up the array again hit start okay so parity sync slash data rebuild at 0.0 percent at, at the bottom um and then if we hold our mouse over the top parity is invalid to click to spin down disk i think that just let's just wait and see if we see some uh data tick i think the really the reason why it says parity is invalid because it hasn't written new parity information in close to a few weeks now at this point because that's how long this sucker has been down and the time i've been invested in into it so let's see here just waiting to see if i can see a little tick up i'm gonna see some progress here all right let's see here what it says unraid parity sync just got a new status message here data rebuild has started on the eight terabyte drive uh obviously the error for the other array array disk one has errors okay disk parity sync in progress okay so i am going to let this run and i think actually gives you an estimated time oh wow okay <laughs> Hopefully that speeds up a little, but yeah, we're showing three plus days, three days, five hours plus of a, golly, that's gonna take a long time. But yeah, that amount of time to rebuild the parity. So I'm gonna let it go. We're basically just gonna let it run and hopefully will be good and okay at that point. So now let's go back to the dashboard real quick. Just take a quick glance. Yeah, disc seven is still showing errors, 393 CRC errors. I might have to replace that drive too. Now it is a used drive, so it's possible maybe, and you know, it's just kind of going bad, which I expect. I didn't expect this one to go bad, if indeed it is bad. So I kind of want to get a better idea of what's going on. So I'm going to connect it to my main rig here, and we're going to do a crystal disc info on this and see if we can get some better information about what's going on with this disc. All right guys, so we've got the drive now in my gaming slash editing computer and 
Well, I'm a little bit surprised. Let me show you what's going on. All right, guys, so as mentioned, I'm a little bit surprised. And what we got here is the Crystal Disk info on the drive I'm suspecting to be bad. And this is what we got. Basically, it looks good. So I'm not sure exactly what is causing the issues on the Unraid environment, not allowing the parity disk to spin up. And by the way, I'll just bring that over into field of view to see where we're at currently. Uh, so we're still working on getting the parity drive, the new drive up as the new parity drive. So we're doing a sync and data rebuild here. We're at 21% and we've sped up a little bit. We're not quite at three days anymore. It looks like it'll actually complete here in about 11 and a half plus hours, which is not bad. But the interesting thing here is with this drive showing as good, I'm kind of wondering if it's still usable at this point. So maybe I can pre-clear it and get it back in the server and use it as a secondary parity drive. So that all remains to be seen. I'll probably do something like that outside this video just because, well, I mean, this one's starting to go on as it is. So at this point, guys, we're just sitting here waiting for the new parity drive to finish completing the rebuild. And then once it's back up, then we can obviously take a quick look and make sure everything is good again. That'll be, you know, in the distant future for me, but only a few seconds for you guys much much later all right guys so new day and about 20 hours later let's take a look at how the parody is doing now all right guys so we are now logged back into the server and look what we have here a green spun up beautiful rebuilt parity drive so that is really really good to see so we can take a look over here on the main dashboard and see that the last parity check or build as we needed it to do completed in 14 hours and 39 minutes. So now we've got everything basically back to where we were. The only thing I need to keep an eye on here is this disc seven, as we noticed that we started to get some alarming amount of UDMA error counts. I'm gonna see if that keeps increasing over time. Not necessarily going to just jump on replacing the drive just yet because I may be just fine. But basically as far as a process for replacing a parity drive, say maybe if you run into the same thing, it's a, it's a common issue to happen. I, like I said, I was scrubbing online forums and everything and found that a lot of people have run into this issue. And the main thing that they're saying is that when you have a bad drive, this being the one that's bad, that it's unable to read or write to it for some odd reason. Now, we know that the drive is considerably good in, according to Crystal Disk Info. So I think at this point, what I wanna do is maybe try to just completely just wipe this drive and start fresh with it as a additional parity drive. So I'll probably go into the server again, do a full pre-clear on this drive, and then try to assign it as a new secondary parity which obviously would be good for us that way if we ever experience this issue again learning process being that probably should always have two parity drives just if something happens and in my case yeah i mean i have some pretty pricey parity drives these are 250 fifty dollar nas drives so it's not like uh, you really want them to go bad or if you are only relying on one drive as parity then you're at a serious data loss risk so guys at this point hopefully you found the video engaging and entertaining, but also most importantly, you found it informative in terms of how to go in there and replace drives, specifically a parity drive within your Unraid NAS server. It really wasn't all that bad for me. It mainly just was time consuming. I wanted to troubleshoot, you know, what are the common causes of failure? You know, we went through that, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately it looks like the fix was replacing the drive, which again, I'm gonna see if I can still make use of this guy. Anywho guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like on the way out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning into this one though. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one.